The original Prince of Persia is an all-time classic. Originally released in 1989 on the Apple II computer, and then ported to, well, pretty much everything. I'm almost sure I played its original incarnation on a computer at school, followed by the Amiga, the Sega Master System, the Macintosh, Super Nintendo, and even the Game Boy. The footage you're seeing here is from the Macintosh port, one of my favourite versions of the game. I'm not actually playing it on original hardware, but the Nintendo Wii, where it was included as a bonus unlockable within one of the series' later sequels, Prince of Persia The Forgotten Sands. Quite simply, you have a ton of different options if you want to play the original Prince of Persia. But the version I've decided to focus on today is the Super Famicom Edition, the Japanese equivalent of the Super Nintendo. I remember buying this copy from a video game market a few years ago, and when I opened it up I found this old sheet of handwritten passwords. I love finding stuff like this. You can tell the previous owner had such a great time playing it, and it's really neat and tidy too, it looks a lot more organised than my password sheets. And just look at this incredible looking artwork by Katsuya Terada, an illustrator whose work you may recognise from early issues of Nintendo Power or some of those strategy guides for The Legend of Zelda. For us Europeans, we did receive the same box art, albeit cropped, so it does kind of ruin it, honestly. The North American release uses a more simple, minimalist design. Not terribly exciting, perhaps, but that same graphic does look incredible on the Macintosh packaging. It's like a work of art. But too bad I shall probably never own a copy. For now, though, I am happy enough with my Super Famicom edition. If you haven't played it before, Prince of Persia is a cinematic action platformer by video game designer Jordan Mechner. One of its main draws at the time was the realistic looking animation of the main character, which was made entirely possible by rotoscoping. An animation process that required the animator to trace over motion picture footage frame by frame, and Mechner even recorded footage of his brother performing acrobatic stunts, and would then trace over them to use as the animation of the main characters. The original Prince of Persia is also famous for marking the debut of the cinematic platformer, or it did at least popularise it. A subgenre of platformers which would be very different compared to the likes of Super Mario. There are no high scores to earn, animal bodies to ride, or power-ups to gain. But instead they focused on the fragile vulnerability of your character. Falling from a great height could injure or kill you, and death is around every corner. I Wow, I forgot how violent this game was, actually. Taking your time to carefully line up jumps correctly and achieving full mastery of the controls is required. It's all a part of the fun. The Super Nintendo version released in 1992, and it is considered a remake. It is also generally regarded as one of the best versions available featuring updated graphics, brand new areas to explore, and a useful training mode to get yourself acquainted with the controls. The Super Famicom Edition here is completely uncensored compared to the international Super Nintendo release. The Prince takes a bit of a beating here in the Japanese intro. I thought I'd play my Super Famicom cartridge on the analog Super NT. This is quite a demanding platformer, so I don't think I'll take the risk of using a wireless adapter and use a wired controller. We don't want any lag now, I- oh, I still died anyway. I did play around with the NT's scanline options to see if I could at least recreate the gritty pixel art of how I remember my OG Prince of Persia experience. Sadly, I don't own a CRT monitor anymore, and I know for many of you playing classic 16-bit games on a 4K TV is probably going to be sacrilegious, but it does look pretty good to me. Just look at that detail in the stonework here. The main goal of the game is to make your way through 20 stages and rescue the princess from the evil wizard Jafar. To further add to the pressure, you are under a strict time limit, and if you don't make it to the princess in time, she will die. Since the Super Nintendo version has added even more content, you do at least get extra time added to the clock. And this version of the game looks fantastic. The new areas slot perfectly into the game. It's very much a 16-bit rendition of the Arabian Nights. But regardless of which other version you play, Prince of Persia is tough. You will need to get a feel for the layout to the levels. Even more so here in the Super Nintendo version than the original, I think. Patience is required. It's not a game for the faint of heart. 
The Prince of Persia franchise has changed so much over the years, from its humble beginnings as a slow-paced atmospheric platformer to a more action-heavy platforming adventure. But you know, that original game is still such a unique experience to me. I can still just feel myself tensing up by performing the simplest of jumps. Just gotta carefully line up your jump, pray you make it over, and then just fail miserably. 